Good girl. Okay, I'm gonna start with a 10 blade. Good girl. And I wanna start right where her stop is. But I'm gonna pull this back so I don't get any of her top knot. And I'm gonna start to come downward. Stay, honey. No, stay. And I wanna go against the grain. Stop. Atta girl. Yes, this uh, this dog was bathed yesterday before she came, so she's all curly and wavy again. But yes, I never work. Yes, I I never work on a dirty dog. I always do them clean. It saves not not only you know time for your haircut, but it also saves your equipment. Yeah, absolutely. And then I want to make sure I pull my eyelid real tight so it doesn't catch the edge of the clipper blade. Okay, everything comes off in front of the ear. And I want to go right from the ear up to the corner of the eye. Make sure my line on my lip is real clean. In front of her nose. It's okay, love. It's okay. It's all right. Nose too. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, when I do the bottom lip, because they have all of those little bumps on their bottom lip, I'll take my thumb tuck it inside the lip to stretch it so that I, yep, and I can clean the flu out and I'm not nicking any of the little bumps. Yeah. Yeah. That's the grain there. Look. Same corner of the ear to the corner of the eye. I, I usually don't pluck out my dog's ears anymore unless it is a client request and they tell me the vet says. Because a lot of times when a dog will get an infection after a grooming, it's, be, it's because we have opened up all of the, the hair follicles and bacteria has grown. I use a a ear cleaner that kills bacteria before it starts. Well, it, for some dogs, it, it blocks the airflow depending on how thick it is. But they're finding that the dog's ears are actually staying in better condition by not plucking. So I'll just like take my blade and just kind of scoop out some of that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, kind of lift that up. Yeah, her ears are, are dirty. They need to be cleaned out. She's got a lot of wax in that ear. Okay, so we're gonna come around to the front. Again, I'm going to put my thumb inside the lip so I don't nick that. That a girl. I'm sorry you don't like your face clean. It's okay. It's almost done. Let's get your little goatee off there. It's okay. Good girl. I'm going to lower her down a little bit so I can do her throat. Now when you do their 
their throat area. You're going to hold their head in a natural position and you're going to follow your finger down to where it starts to fall off. Mm -hmm. Now with her, if you feel her throat, feel how big this bulges out. Okay, she's That's what they she's call a back. ewe neck. She's, no. she's got a neck like a sheep. Okay, oh, yeah. so when I put her head back, oh. her head basically touches her withers. Oh, yeah. her it shouldn't do that, wow. okay? In a lot of poodles, they are what they call ewe necks. They're like oh. a sheep. Okay, oh. so I don't want to fully expose that, so yeah. I'm going to raise it up. Yeah. If they aren't ewe necked, what you would want to do is come down, follow it to where it starts to drop off, and then start your shaving. But I don't want to expose all that, so I'm going to raise my clipper line upward. Yep, right, right to the side of the ear. Yep. Yep, the exact same thing. Their faces are done exactly the same, and it's measured exactly the same. Same with setting your tail set or your tail bam where that goes. Okay. We're going to clean this out a little bit. So I have a nice clean stop. Sorry, what color do you call this her? is a she's a red. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's her face, feet, and tail that are done. 